Every day brings new light to help us on our way. Always taking my breath, whether sun or rain. The wind will carry us over that horizon we see. Ho. I've managed to swing off the road. Um, I'm not going to be able to say this. It's either Huli or Guli. G H O O L E L I. It's a uh, pump station. There was um, eight pump stations, I believe, from Mundaring through to um, Kalgoorlie. Um, they had to get water some 355 meters from there uphill. Um, to the Kalgoorlie station. So they needed some pump stations on the way that could you know, pressurise and push the water further up. So um, let me see, what was it? About 1903 to about 1970, I believe um, these pump stations operated um, and they were um, steam. So um, they required huge amounts of firewood to um, power the boiler that uh, ran the, the pump. So uh, this was the uh, one of the pump houses here. So I think about 1970, they started co converting them over to electric. So I'm not too sure there's other buildings around. I think the one over there by the, um, the van might be the, the electric one, um, tucked in the distance there. And then I think around about 2002, they updated the electric as well. So I don't think there's so much as a an electric pump station like that. Um, the electric pumps looks like they might be even just mounted on the pipes as you go along. And I think there's there's a lot more of those. So yeah, it's a, an old bit of history here. Um, it's just outside, this one is just outside um, uh, Southern Cross, which has been easy for me to swing on in. And I think the uh, the big one here is a, um, a covered um, reservoir. So water sort of came in it got um, sort of like a holding tank. I think it was capable of holding around about a hundred and, no, 50 million liters, I think it was. Here we go, uh, what happened? Yeah, it was um, uh, 66 meters in diameter, 15 meters high, and can hold 50 million liters. So, um, and, and it got covered because um, uh, it would evaporate. So you didn't want to lose, you'd be doing all that hard work and a large amount of it would be evaporating, especially if you've got eight of these on the, on the way. So uh, yeah, um, a little bit of a, a ghost relic now. So um, yeah, nice to swing on in and have a quick look. Onwards to Southern Cross. So just a, a quick walk, I noticed uh, there is a big tank around there. I don't know, it looks fairly new, it doesn't look like, kind of like that sort of era. But um, that could be 66 by 15, able to hold uh, 50 million litres of water. And uh, I'm then not too sure what this one here is. Just swung into town, Southern Cross, just at a dump station and a rubbish bin and uh, fill up with some water. 
but uh, bumped into this. It's at the man shed. Talk about a toy. There you go. I think it's a, well, it's a flying boat. I think they call them uh, the Cat, uh, Catalina. Could be wrong. Yeah, that's one hell of a project, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, we're just down here at uh, Southern Cross. There you go, some pretty good uh, facilities here. Water dispenser. It's like uh, 10 cents with the 20 litres or a 15 minute timeout, so get myself all organised and um, hook her all up. So, yeah, coming at you from Southern Cross. I've only just dug out because it just got cool enough to bloody walk out here and the flies have dived down. Um, so yeah, Southern Cross. I've taken the opportunity to stay somewhere where I haven't stayed before. It's a pub camping. It's where you can go on this app, um, Country Pubs, and um, there's a little file there that tells you um, of the areas in the states that you're in, so WA, and uh, yeah, Southern Cross comes up. So nice little pub, been over there, had a couple of beers, little afternoon brewskis, and um, yeah, uh, the Railway Motel, or Hotel, Railway Hotel. So it must have been back in the old uh, 1890s, and uh, yeah, I guess the station was here. The station used to run a narrow gauge, and um, later it's been updated to a larger gauge and a little bit further from town so they did pretty good in the early years so here we are yeah so I've worked in the opposite direction I mean we started up in Kalgoorlie and I'm working my way back and of course everybody started in Perth and worked their way to Kalgoorlie so further up old um, Paddy Helen what well, well, Paddy Hannon well the first sort of history he came into Perth came to Southern Cross found his own little mine shaft out here and then he moved to Coolgardie and then he went further and he did pretty well in uh, Kalgoorlie there. Um, this area here has um, really made a name for itself in agriculture as well so uh, horticulture, agriculture, there's lots of um, maize. They just had a big bumper season, 22 million odd tons of um, harvest so the fields of gold, trust me. Anyway, Southern Cross, look up those uh, country pubs, they're a great spot. And uh, oh, and to add that water that I went to get, the machine was broken. So, a huge shout out to the um, Southern Cross uh, caravan park. I'm sorry I'm not staying there the night. I had to pay for water, I'm only too happy to pay for water. Um, but if you want to hook up and uh, have power and water, Southern Cross. Caravan Park, it's really nice. Oh, the flies have finally found I'm alive out here. So yeah, back behind me, over to the west here, I think there's another 24 hour park there. And if I can find it, there's a little uh, plaque there where gold was first found. This is the main highway, the Golden Pipeline Heritage Dist Trail. And of course, the pipeline's there. Just come up and park the, uh, the van just at the, uh, the corner there. And of course the pipeline again. This is a little sample of the, the old line. A few little valves, things on it there. And then we're overlooking Southern Cross out to those fields of maize. Can't really see too much of Southern Cross, but nestled in amongst those few trees and bits and pieces is Southern Cross. There's an old, um, there's an old filled in pit. There's quite a lot of water in that one there. I think uh, from, from the maps, I think I saw about um, three, maybe four um, pits around here. There's a nice tribute at the top of the lookout. Um, the nice thing about it is sort of on, on this side here, you've obviously got the tribute to the, uh, the, the mining side of things. And then on the other side, you get a tribute to the, um, the agriculture. It's quite good. A nice little high point here. Oh, cool. A little, uh, what do you call them? Little high frames down there too. 
There we go, not far from the lookout. In fact, actually, I think the lookout is uh, Wimera Hill. So the plaque erected by the Southern Cross Tourist Committee, it uh, identifies the site of the first gold discovery in Southern Cross on Wimera Hill by Thomas Randall Risley and uh, Michael Toomley on January the 14th, which is, uh, oh, I just happened to be here very close to that day. On January the 14th, 1888, the actual location is 300 meters due east of this plaque. So, um, yeah, it's just the other side of the plaque. I noticed there was um, there's some fencing around and some diggings and um, lots of danger signs. So, there we go, the Southern Cross, 1888. Some grand old pubs. There's the Palace Hotel on the main street and the main highway of uh, Southern Cross come from a really nice uh, little driver reviver area that you pull into and take a break it says and then looking up the main street of Southern Cross it was a bit like Kilgardie and uh, Kalgoorlie lots and lots of pubs a lot of them uh, sort of disappeared but there's, uh, there's about three or four that are still quite apparent it's interesting to point out that um, up south here there's a bunch of saltwater lakes and they can interconnect at times during um, heavy rains and um, all link together and start heading out towards um, Northern Way, Northern by Kilberian and Beverly. During very wet seasons these lakes can become interconnected at the surface and form part of the Swan Avon, Avon catchment. I'll hopefully be able to see a little bit of that as I travel west. So here you go, a quick little rundown of uh, I suppose the, the, the Yilgarn area. Um, keeping in mind, uh, well, Barabin, that's where the, uh, the trucking disaster was there with the fire. Currently, currently a dam or rocks, that's where we were the, the other night. Uh, the pump station, Guli. And then, yeah, we're tonight, uh, last night I was in uh, Southern Cross. Alrighty, left Southern Cross after disappointment not finding the museum. And uh, listen, I've only just driven 25 k's down the road. Um, Marine Rocks, I think it's called. There's a little roadhouse sort of tavern accommodation place um, that you can stop at um, just a few k's up, back up the road. But I've elected to stay out here. I tend to like a bit of peace and quiet and no light pollution and uh, if I can stay away from the road as much as possible. It's it's good although the road is, I can hear it, but it should die down. But um, yeah, this is just a um, one of those roading sites again. Big old gravel pit, um, goes quite a way back. I'm gonna throw the old drone up because I think there's some pastures not far from here as well. So um, yeah, here fairly early. Got the place to myself at the moment. Might be another old traveler and things coming here. I don't know how popular it is. But uh, yeah, looks, looks good. Apart from the flies and the heat. We are talking definitely a, a 40 degree day today. So got the awning set up on the far side. Um, sun's gonna be disappearing soon. So uh, if the flies don't get too too bad at me, I might sit out here with the old awning and, uh, and uh, take it easy. Catch ya. Just uh, shelter here somewhat from the wind, it's pretty strong. Got up bloody strong last night, so it was a, yeah, a little bit uncomfortable rocking around and uh, closing windows and rattling blinds and things. So 
But uh, yes, I'm leaving out of here, heading uh, uh, west uh, to Westonia. Right, made it to uh, Westonia. Thought I'd just duck straight through to uh, a working mine site out at Westonia. It's called uh, Edna May. So, uh, not it's only just a few minutes up the road. Edna May Gold Mine is a stop on the Golden Pipeline Heritage Trail. The trail tells the story of gold and water, elements that have shaped Western Australia. Westonia owes its existence to the discovery of gold, the highest grade of ore in the Yalgarn field. Water has played a part in the fortunes as well. So that's one open pit. I'm not too sure whether there was an underground portal or something that went down where the water is, but uh, Nothing's going down there now. And then we've got the processing plant. Okay, it's Wendy's buggery up here, so it's really hard to sort of film, but uh, it was quite interesting that there was a, a couple of blokes who were in charge of the pump station out here that were uh, you know, looking after the pumps to the, the Goldfields Kalgoorlie water pipeline. And the engineer in charge, number five, found gold at a prospect he and his partners named the Myrtle Central Mind. So according to the family legend, young son Horace found the gold, but as he was underage, Edmund applied for applied on the 10th of January 1911 for a lease named for family member Edna May. In the first eight years of operation, the Edna May mine produced 171,000 ounces of gold. By 1922, however, the mine was forced to close. Large quantities of underground water were seeping into the mine and the supply of high quality ore was exhausted. Mining resumed in 1935 and the main roof reef was mined to a depth of 250 meters, producing 355 ounces of gold before the mine was once again forced to close in 1947. The same problem of water and exhaustion of the ore were compounded by the shortage of labour around the war. With rising gold prices and new mining technique, the Edna May was reopened again in 1985. However, back in 1991, it was forced to close again after tests down to 270 metres below the bottom of the pit indicated that there was too much water and not enough ore to continue mining. But in 2010, now owned by Evolution Mining, it's opened up again, and here we are today, still producing. Oh, sorry if the wind's too strong up there, folks. Yeah, very interesting to have a look. So obviously the, the town of Westonia probably uh, pays a hell of a lot of tribute to the, uh, the mine that uh, has a, quite a few fly and fly out workers that stay here and patronize the town. Uh, there is a caravan park and uh, I'm gonna go down and um, have a look and see what we've got there. There's a 48 hour caravan park there, or a 48 hour free park, I can park it as well. So I might do one night there and one night at the caravan park just to change it up. Alrighty ho, just finishing up the day. It's been windy, still windy as you can probably make out, um, and it's been fairly warm. Managed a really nice feed for lunch in town. 
thank you very much to the uh, the owner down there. She was just uh, shutting up shop, and um, fortunately, she said the hot plate was still uh, still hot. And if I wanted anything, she'd make it up. So, oh, and that laid me low for a bit. That was a good feed. So, highly recommended the old cafe in town here. It's got a bit of a gallery there to have a look through as well. Should be good. But hey, here's the stop that I'm uh, pulled up. Uh, St. Luke's, I think it is. Yeah, St. Luke's Church. It's a 48 hour um, park up spot from Wiki Camps. And uh, it'll do me for tonight. And then I'm going to go down the way and, um, and uh, spend a penny down at the, uh, the other caravan park uh, further down the street. Morning. Just leaving the West Only, a little caravan park there. Beautiful little spot. We'll show you that in more detail. But today, we're going to check out the Westonia Woodlands and Wildflowers Heritage Trail. So there you go. It's um, not a scale model. Well, it would be just some sort of scale, but it's not a, an exact replica, judging by the, uh, the photograph there. But where I am right now, this is the site of the old Westonia Hospital. It was constructed following the demand for immediate medical help, which came uh, predominantly from the miners and their families living in the area at the time. So the construction began in 1914 and the hospital was opened on oh, October uh, 1915. I'll tell you what's helped me a bit here is that I've, I've picked up one of these uh, woodland little heritage maps and it's got the little uh, trail and things on there. Oh, what's it? Bloody, bloody ants. Don't stop for too long, they'll eat ya. Only one of them. Number two, West Only Hospital, check. Mining memories. Number three, onwards. Right, this little spot I'm coming to, mining memories. They're telling about um, little homesteads, either the miners, probably some early, early farmers as well, but you can just pick out um, a, a line here of, um, what do you call it, the old fence posts. Looks like they run in that direction down there. So obviously a, a little boundary to either um, a homestead or something. It's, there's a few uh, kerosene cans, food cans, that sort of stuff that might be about. All right, come to a little spot here called Lichen Lookout. So it can take up to 10 years for lichen to grow one centimeter. So state of the track. Um, they're one of the hardiest of organisms and uh, found in extreme environment, or and are found in extreme environments. They use as environmental indicator because of their efficiency in absorbing water and minerals. It makes them sensitive to pollution. An old car in the bush there. Looks like it's seen better days. Obviously there looks like a little bit of a track there, but I'm going to err on the side of caution after what the uh, little road sign said back there about the, uh, the lichen and the algae. Looks like a ute of some sort. Fortunately it's high enough, but I can just see a silken thread. Oh yeah, there's a spider I think at the far side, but he's gonna run that line. Man, it looks it looks like about six pound breaking strain fishing nylon. And uh, not gonna walk too much off the trail here. Oi. Oh, I think I might just hang back on the trail. I don't want him jumping. So run your hand along the trunk of this beautiful Malay. The bark is incredibly smooth to the touch and features fine talcum powder-like coating. From October to January, where we are now, these red flowered Malay exhibit a bright red, pink, or creamy white flower, depending on the form. While the flowers are indeed spectacular, the bark varies from intense white through to striking purplish red. They're a native to the Western Australia. Not seeing too many flowers on this one, but yeah, you can see how. Oh yeah, that's incredibly smooth. Oh, no need to sand that, baby. And yeah, I've just gone and put my hands together like that, and super slippery. Just exiting that nice little walk. It's mainly the bush walk, then the rest goes through town. I'll have a quick look through town, go and have a look at this museum. 
So the farmer has uh, quite happily donated some drums and uh, they painted it up with some of the artwork from um, the street of Westonia. If you go around the back side of Westonia, what is it? Look for Cement Road. Um, there's a swimming pool complex and um, bowls and tennis courts and things in here. But so if you come from this way, it's a one-way road and quite nicely sort of themed a particular street here with a bit of old-timer um, agriculture, farming machinery, animals, nice bit of thing down there and the caravan park further down. So I finally made it down to the uh, Hood and Pen Museum. Three dollars to enter at the information centre there. And wow, it's very flash. In the meantime, I'll have a beer with this fella. Make more a point. <laughs> Here's an interesting fact. Old mate was telling me here that uh, the commercial bottling started in the second half of the 17th century. Brewers started using glass because it kept the beer fresher for longer. And if the beer was left in the sun too long, brewers found out the beer that was held in clear bottles would smell and taste skunky. So scientists discovered that the ultraviolet rays from the sun break down the alpha acids in hops, which then reacted with the sulfur present in the beer to form a chemical that was almost identical to the chemical that the skunk uses to spray on its predators. Jeez. Thank heavens they came up with a solution tint the beer bottles. So they came up with the brown and the amber bottles. But there was a problem around World War II. The brown and, uh, glass, and, uh, brown glass and the sulfur needed to make the amber colored rose were in demand as many companies had to forfeit their brown glass for their country. Beer again had to be bottled in green or clear bottles. So uses for sulfur during the wartime, medications, sulfur tablets for contaminant water, and uh, used in gunpowder. But uh, yeah, interesting how beer went from the clear bottle into the amber bottle. Thanks, mate. So apparently a lot of this bar was um, salvaged from the old Edna May Hotel. Everyone, thank you for watching Sweet As RVing. Um, hey, tune in for the, for the next episode. And um, if you could help us out, um, push that like button, share, tell everybody out there about us at uh, Sweet As RVing and uh, pop a comment in if there's something that we can talk about and um, uh, bring to you and uh, we'll do our best to do it.